The, the majority of homeless population are male and 40% of the male homeless population are former military. I think some of the onus of the responsibility should be put on the military. We spend so much money on military today, like it's like it's 25% of the federal budget. It seems to me that a very small amount, if any, is going to help that population once they leave the military and then become homeless. Welcome everybody, episode 40 of the Alfalfa Podcast. We're talking about homelessness. We're a few drinks deep. We're having a good time. Uh, Nick is about to close all his apps. As one does. <laughs> I can multitask. Right? Yeah, sure you can. I definitely cannot. And um, the interesting thing about this that I was just thinking about after we wrapped the last episode is that homelessness is like probably the biggest fear of like most of us at this table after we just talked about how to get rich quickly. And now we're going to talk about it. So let's talk about our fears, guys. I, I feel like my mom wouldn't happily take me in, honestly, on her couch. So. <laughs> would or would not? No, she would. Oh, okay. okay. She'd be thrilled. So you have a backup plan. Yeah. She'd be thrilled to have me back. Yeah, <laughs> She'd be thrilled. Not every parent would say the same. <laughs> so, Stephen, uh, let's begin with this incredible societal problem of human beings sleeping on the street. Yeah. Why are they there? I think this is like... I mean, we live in California, so I, I feel like maybe some people are like homelessness. Who cares? But like for, for, for all of us, we we walk outside anywhere we go. And we're like, holy crap. And to me, it's always been this like interesting problem because we are so rich. We're so wealthy, like unbelievably wealthy as a society, as a country. And just the juxtaposition of what uh, even us at the table have aspire to be. And then you walk outside and somebody's like in a coma, like sleeping with their pants down on the sidewalk. And you're just like, whoa, how does this happen? Um, so, and we live in San Diego, like LA, it's even worse. San Francisco, it's like actually just complete shit show, right? Um, so it's something top of our mind all the time. And it, it just seems to me like one of those problems, which is just like, how has this not been solved? <laughs> and why is, it, why is it getting wor worse than not solved? It seems to be getting worse, right? So what the hell is going on? So some quick stats for you guys. Like we have officially, quote unquote, like 500, 600,000 homeless people in America. Um, about a third of them live in California. <laughs> Over 10% of them live in LA County alone. Um, wow. Crazy epidemic. Um, I it, did it, not know that. It, yeah, it's 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 nuts. It, it, have you guys been to LA recently? Have you been to like oh, yeah. Santa Monica recently? You still live there. LA, San Francisco. It's apocalyptic terrifying yeah no i i saw a clip somebody posted on twitter uh, a few days ago for an uber driver who is like literally from afghanistan and he's just driving through the tenderloin he's like this is worse than Kabul." wow <laughs> and it's like how how did we get here so i i, I guess my question to to you guys for whoever wants to get it uh why does this problem exist in the first place is this an issue of housing as a lot of people say <clears throat> is this an issue of drug like so the to, to, to frame the case right you've got this sort of like uh what's his name michael schellenberger the guy who's running for governor he's basically like this is a problem of mental illness and drug addiction and complete government incompetence um of especially like progressive government incompetence the other side of the issue is like uh, these are good people. They just can't afford to live. They're on the streets because housing is too expensive. So I'm I'm, I'm curious uh, what your take is on this. Yeah, I mean, I think I think he's he's mostly right. But I, I did find a graph that showed a positive correlation between median rent prices for a city and the homelessness rate. Mm -hmm. So th I think there is some fact of like um, that, was, that was a twenty. That was that Harvard study. From yeah, 2017. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and so there is some extent where where true poverty plays in and and the lack of affordable housing plays in into account but uh i i do think that the real problem the the problem that you need to focus on if you want to solve this at you know at large is mental illness and, and substance abuse and often overlapping so uh, two-thirds of homeless people in la have an addiction or a mental health issue and 50 percent estimated of homeless people in sf have have both. So we're looking at like, if you're looking at how do I, what's the 80, 20 of solving this problem, you do have to address mental health and substance abuse. And, and the reason again, we're focusing on California is because I believe they have, I, I don't know. I, I saw a stat said over 25% of unhoused Americans live in yeah, California. 30, I got, I got 30% in my stats. Okay. And, and crazy in Californians yeah. are 
roughly 12% of the population. So we're, we're very over-indexed in terms of the homelessness problem to, according to you know, know our populations. That well, that's, that's why we're here. That's so, you know, I mean, on that specific yeah. question of why they're in California, why I mean, they're I, in California. Yeah. It's I mean, nice. <laughs> the weather's it is, nice. The weather's nice. nice. You don't have winter. Okay. But here's a good is counter the three to that. W's? The weather, weather the weather is very nice in Orlando. Like, yeah, sure, maybe it's a little too humid for us. We're like, oh, I don't know, it's kind of You can of go sticky. any latitude But if you, if you don't have a house, it's a pretty nice place to be. You're probably not overly complaining about the humidity versus, like, being in St. Paul right, in the Right, like, winter, Denver right? has a lot of homeless, and that's cold. Yeah, like, Orlando has an extremely low rate of homelessness, actually. Um, so I feel like that flies in the face. I, I looked into this a lot, and there's a lot of, like, confounding data, right? So you look at the bottom of, like, least home, and you see, like, Oh, Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, like red, up red, 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 and then you know what else is down there? Chicago. Hmm. Chicago is one of the lowest, and and, and I'm saying because you can't like survive per, per and, capita yeah. basis. Yeah, I almost didn't Not survive a, a New Year's Eve with you. Like, <laughs> I remember that <laughs> we ran into a Seven Eleven to stay warm <laughs> so cool. for five minutes. <laughs> and, and, and to your point, like I think an interesting question is like, okay, so I, I agree when everybody's like, it, we have a lot of anecdotal experience, and I don't like doing things anecdotally. As a general rule, but there's like a point where people tell you things and you're just like, <laughs> no, that's not the way it is. Like, I, I see this with my eyes every day. Can I right? start with an anecdote? Yes. Just one anecdote. anecdote me. First day I moved from New York City to the heart of San Francisco. I got an apartment on Hyde Street. Nick's been there. Yeah. You, you of course, you've been there. So there are 10 years. <laughs> and I'm uh, walking to the grocery store literally truly my first day in san francisco i'm on a very narrow sidewalk and i think i'm walking directly on polk street which is like one of the main it is the main in the heart of the city and there's a crowd of people there's a guy no more than like 20 feet in front of me uh, and all of a sudden he stops drops his pants broad daylight <laughs> Nobody moves. Nobody flinches. Everyone just keeps walking. His dick is out. His ass is out. He's just standing there. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he does like a perfect Asian squat that I've been lately actually working on. The, uh, we've been talking about this in the Discord. For your posture, not, yeah. not to defecate. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm <laughs> just to be clear. Just to be clear. <laughs> well, to be totally honest with you, I'm also working on it for outdoor survival, it's survival back to San skill. Fran, we are, hey, how all do you four like of us now? are going into we're, the... We're going on a hike and I want to be able to Asian squat well while I'm You're on gonna this hike. To. You're going to have to. Because I'm going to have to. Well, this gentleman, uh, Asian squats and takes a dump directly. At that point, I was coming up right behind him. I'm like, okay, this man has his ass out. All I could see is man ass directly in front of me. I'm walking closer toward him. I'm like, should I cross the other I side? I love how you're like analyzing this. Well, you didn't I'm like, like react. Nobody like, must run across else. the street. No, mu no, nobody was reacting. I was the only one reacting. <laughs> it was my first day in San Francisco. And all of a sudden, this guy squats and literally starts taking a dump. <laughs> Now here's the most. It's on a main street. A oh very man, popular we're talking street. about like Broadway, New York. Like we're talking about like it's as main street it's as where it you gets. go for dinner to go out, to go out and have drinks. Here yeah. was the part that blew me away and the funniest part of the whole story. This guy starts doing what I just said, and I go, "Whoa!" <laughs> I just yell all of a sudden. <laughs> I just go, "What the fuck?" Whoa! Some guys like first time. He's like <laughs> yeah. everyone. Everyone around me just looks at me. I swear to God, they like all have their AirPods on. Yeah, yeah, totally. They're like, dude, come on. First just bear market. Walk. <laughs> First <laughs> dump. Straight up. So like the level of how severe it is, anecdotally, in a city like San Francisco, which by the way, I would not dare step foot into right now because in the last three years, ever since the pandemic happened, those that have heard about San Francisco, it has become a, a, a complete apocalypse so, war zone. I think that anecdote is actually useful, not to make light of the situation, but for people who don't live in yeah. cities like this. It was this, just to illustrate what That is like really a normal like. occurrence of, of what happens. I mean, another occurrence, another video that went viral is a normal bus stop for fifth graders getting off of you know the bus in order to walk home. And, and the bus stop is literally surrounded by an open drug area where... People are smoking crack, very open, I mean, within feet of this bus stop. And 
there's there's nothing being done. They're just getting dropped off in a very unsafe neighborhood. I don't think any parent would want their children being dropped off around that. So for people who don't live in areas like this, I think it's important to illustrate like how um, intense the situation can be when you live in big cities like this, particularly in LA, San Francisco, and sometimes in San Diego, and, and maybe in a few other cities in, in, in the country. I, I don't know what the homelessness rates are outside of the US, but I, I do think we have a unique problem um, in the US in regards to homelessness. Um, I, I would like to fast yeah. forward us to, to the point Go. where you said most conversations about this yeah. topic start and then end. So about eight years ago, I uh, had an opportunity to be part of a group where the uh, San Diego chief of police came and spoke to a group of entrepreneurs. And uh, one of the questions asked to the chief um, was, you know, what are we, what are you doing about homelessness? And she said, well, um, the fact is, is that most people think that homelessness, hom- homeless people are there because they don't have enough money or they're in poverty, but most of them are, have mental illness like schizophrenia or have drug addictions. He's, and she said, we have openings in our shelters. There is room, there is more room to house people, but they do not wanna be there because like, like you said, um, they require them to be drug free and they would rather live outside on the street and be able to do drugs than, than move into a shelter. So stupid. Right, so, so I think that's where you said most of these conversations kind of start and yeah, end. Stop. And so let's- But not just the conversation stops, the solution stops. Right. It's just stupid. These people are addicted to drugs, many of them. Right. Okay, here's- Why don't we focus on the problem? Here's a good question. Go, but the one thing I have on this is just that society in every arena is so good at uh, creating and selling band-aids. What about getting to the heart of the matter? What about digging deep to the root, the psychology of the individual, the mental illness, the fact that they might be schizophrenic, the fact that like typically a lot of these people would be in asylums back in the day, or you have on the other side of the spectrum, just addiction. All they need is rehabilitation. And because they wanna do uh, some fucking angel dust or crack cocaine, we won't give them a place to sleep at night. Yeah, they're gonna choose the crack cocaine because they're addicted. Like. And then what we do is we have this apathy toward people. And I think that a huge thing that a lot of society doesn't discuss is that we're just apathetic toward homeless people. We don't have heart for them. They're choosing to be on drugs. They're not like me. I worked hard for my position in life, but we're not actually identifying and being empathetic and compassionate enough to like the root of the issue. Addiction is a disease for so many people that is absolutely uncontrollable. You need help. You need outside help. It it is not manageable as an individual. And we just turn a blind eye because we're too busy coming up with ways to capitalize on the situation or provide a little bit of a budget to solve the problem. And if the problem doesn't get solved, hey, it's not our fault. Maybe that's too much, but that's... Somewhat okay, of what so I want you to ask the, the question because I have a feeling what question you're going to ask. I have a lot of questions to ask so, as the as the bleeding heart liberal of the group. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> dude, that was shocking. Yeah, I know this. The stats don't lie, unfortunately. Um, so, so first question: A lot of people talk about like, are homeless people <clears throat> homeless, or are they addicted to drugs and mentally ill? Right? I don't hear a lot of people asking: Are homeless people addicted to drugs? because they're homeless or are they homeless because they're addicted to drugs? And I think that's like an important, like kind of- That's a that's a great point because being homeless can cause mental health issues, right? Yeah, like if does. you don't have a place to live, you could imagine how you might develop some like a variant of schizophrenia. And um, that, that that's certainly an issue. Um, yeah, first guy you meet across the street might be like, you want to hit of this? It'll make you feel better. Yeah. I mean, like, like right. look, like, I have, as a longtime Californian at this point, I've probably met thousands of homeless people. And like anecdotally, if you were to ask me, what percentage of homeless people have you encountered who are mentally ill or like literally on drugs at the time? The number in my head is like 85%. Oh, I was going to say it's, 90 plus. It's like, 
it, so whenever I see like people writing these articles about oh, oh actually all these homeless people there's these actually these just families of in, in my mind I'm like this is bullshit all the people on the streets are mentally ill I, and addicted to drugs but I do think it's important to ask the question are they addicted to drugs and mentally ill because they've been on the street or did they get on the streets because they were first mentally no, ill I addicted to drugs No I think a complete pulling it out of my ass you know I don't I don't think you can ever answer this question with data it's impossible, but my gut says these people were mentally ill. They've always been mentally ill, and 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 historically, if you look back, there's always been a percentage of people that have been mentally ill in society, and they've always been in different environments or homeless or whatever it might be. And I think that the rest of society wants nothing to do with these people. I mean, I think it's that simple. Re re Nobody wants to deal with it. Regardless, the the data does show that at least half or the majority of people either have a mental illness or are addicted to some form of drugs. So that's the situation we're right. dealing with. Whether so how they started, got there, it, it's almost irrelevant. You know, the, the fact is that you're dealing, if you want to solve the problem, you are dealing with those. Yes, yeah, a, a twofold facts. problem. Twofold. That's very serious. Okay, right. so that reminds me, and, and, yeah. to, to get back to another point Armand was saying before, he was like, okay, I feel like people have like, let these people go and they don't care about them. I, I don't feel like that's true at all. Like in, in my Who mind- Who do you know that does anything <clears throat> about this? Okay, so in terms of like, I don't necessarily think that if you don't actively do something, you're being a part, you're being helpful or non helpful, right? If you are a part of a school of thought that advocates for a particular position, supports, votes for people who implement a position, and that position, that, that, that course of action is bad, you are just as bad as like the person who is actively doing wrong things in my mind, right? And what, what I see from my, fellow bleeding heart liberal friends is like the <laughs> you're really going with this i thought you don't like labels wow i don't i'm just trying to he's a new you know? label it's, it's like a, a new, new label he's trying it on he as likes long as the he new puts ones. it on himself you yeah. try to label oh, you, you try to label me as a moderate and i get yeah. offended by just being ran labeled. ran from i've hills. run from it as a contrarian but um i think that my quote unquote like cold-hearted conservative friends whatever you want to call them who are just like these people need to fucking get their shit together we can't allow this as a society although on the front end i think what they are saying is sort of cruel right and on the front end what the sort of bleeding heart liberals are saying is like we need to have compassion for these people and just but i think ultimately the implementation of those two policies ends up being like the the this is what schellenberger says right he's sort of like these this progressive sort of like <clears throat> enabling of this like this behavior in a way that is under the guise of compassion is producing, even though for that individual person, it might be compassionate for the group as a whole throughout time, you are enabling more of the behavior and you're producing more aggregate harm, not only to those people, but to the society who like have to like kind of bear like the brunt of like the, the externalities that these people yeah. cause. Right. So I, I don't think there's anything, I don't think they're turning an eye. I think they're 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 looking at them, and I think what they are actively advocating for is 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 bad. So let, let me get to an, an argument that I think we can debate a little bit, and I'll ask the question that Stephen even asked before we started recording, which is, should it be legal for people to live on the street? Should it be legal for them to have tents and live on the street? And I'm going to make the position that it should not, and I'll, I'll call it like altruistic permissiveness is what has grown in California that like it would be inhumane to move people off the street into jail is how it's framed. We don't want to move them from the streets into jail because that would be inhumane. It doesn't solve the problem. But I do think you need to enforce these laws and you need to make it illegal for people to live on the street and camp out underneath freeways and highways and wh wherever that may be may be yeah outside and, and, my apartment right and so where where i think you can actually thread the needle here of potentially solving the mental health issue and the addictive issue at the same time while enforcing this law is is look at how um the these services are rendered currently so homelessness services and mental health services are usually uh, managed by individual counties. So San Diego County, Sacramento County uh, has mental health services, addiction services that are open to the public. The, the majority of them are, are rendered through charities, 
right? And we all have been part of charities. We've, we, we've volunteered. And while charities are, are great, for a complex problem such as homelessness, what you end up having are volunteers running a charity who, just, just to be frank, do not have the skills or experience to run this effectively. Well said. So while... You know, I, I rarely argue for the case of centralizing power in like a higher authority. In this case, I think, and I'm, I'm pro Schellenberger in his, his like uh, argument for this, is you centralize the, the psychiatric care in the addiction, you know, care uh, and treatment centers by the state. So mm-hmm. you, you let the county keep their state funding for their services that they're providing now. You don't put them at threat but you provide additional funding by the state. And, and that also includes more police force because if you're going to go to- I thought a, we're defunding that. We're not. Okay. Not in this, not in this world. Not okay. in this podcast. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Slings is good. <gone>. Yeah. <laughs> Come along for the ride, partner. Oh uh, man, I wish I had like the sound effect button ready to go. <laughs> Just the old Western- <laughs> <whip. laughs> So- That's pretty good. Yeah, that was good. Um, so, so essentially what I'm saying is you increase the police force and you offer, of course, voluntary, you know, you come voluntarily into the shelter like we do now, but it's a state run shelter. It's not a county run shelter. It's not a charity run shelter. It's a state run shelter that is hopefully managed by people who have experience running these type of facilities. Um, but then in addition to that, you run involuntary sheltering. So mm-hmm. if it's someone who is living on the street and can maintain themselves in a shelter in a safe way, um, then you bring, you know, probably by police force, which is what mm. where this like combats with this idea of like this altruistic per- permissiveness. It doesn't sound nice to put someone in a squad car and drop them off at a, at a shelter. It doesn't sound. It sounds actually sounds terrible. It sounds nice to me, but there's a few nuances there. Well, yeah. Uh, so, so let me get to the points where it sounds even worse. So, okay. let's say it's a homeless person. What can, if the, yeah. What if they're saying they're leave like, "Leave me alone. I, I don't want to go." Well, you force them in the shelter, and let's say um, outside of that, they show strong addictive behavior, meaning they cannot physically, mentally operate within a shelter. Then you're talking about like an involuntary, essentially like a hospitalization. Yes. And this is where it gets you know, a little intense because what you're talking about in the scenario is like the court basically providing conservatorship over that individual. Right. Deciding, okay, you are not allowed to sleep on the street. Um, You cannot, you know, behave properly in a shelter or maybe it's just not the right environment for you. The right environment for someone who's addicted to drugs is to go through a treatment program and that may be some version of hospitalization. Would a person who shows no mental instability be allowed then to continue staying on the street and living on the beach if they wanted to? No. So nobody. Illegal across the board. Yeah. Th- there's no, th- there would be a strict no vagrancy law. So, you know, w- you know, you can imagine the social media clips now of what that would look like, mm. but I'm trying to get people to understand Let's look a little further past that. Like you're essentially putting people in buckets. Okay, you can survive in a shelter. And I also believe in the the no drug use. Like you will be drug tested in this shelter. And you cannot do drugs in this shelter. It's not, it's not allowed. And then for people who have mental illness and no drug addiction, then you need to significantly expand those like psychiatric services. Again, run by the state, not by a charity, not by a county. You have to invest a lot of a lot of money in that and provide those services and provide those facilities for those people to go through. So you have essentially voluntary people who can stay in a shelter. You have psychiatric services for people with mental health. You have drug addiction treatment centers for people who fall in that category. And in some of those cases, the part that is not very nice is that it is essentially involuntary, meaning they will say, I do not want to go here. And the the police and the court are basically unified that, well, you're going to go here. Mm -hmm. And um, beyond that, you could also provide housing, whether that's halfway housing or or real housing, and say, you can stay here as long as you like, as long as you pass drug tests. And if you do that, and studies have shown, like if, if you require a drug test, that, you know, a certain amount will, 
they will have a greater success rate, meaning in six months, they will not be doing drugs because they have access to housing and maybe other incentives, like whether it's gift cards for, for money or medical services, like those can be used properly, you know, for people who, you know, stay away from drugs and, and go through the treatment programs to, to get off their addiction. Um, there have to be municipalities that already ascribe to these ideologies. Do you know of any? I, I, I don't. I mean, like, this is why I'm, I'm interested in this uh, argument the most, because we are not we're we're doing the exact opposite of this and is clearly not working this isn't it, this is similar to like portugal's philosophy right because a lot of people like to be like oh drugs are illegal in portugal but they also like kind of like force you to go to rehab in a particular way right like if you are seen to be like a danger to yourself or the everybody else like they it's this kind of like interesting like this duality where it's like sure you can do it but like uh, yeah. Also, also no. Yeah, and so so Schellenberger, you know, he he argues for the case of of this new organization called he called it CalPsych, and it's essentially like a, a skunk works, meaning this group can make decisions, purchasing decisions, moving people back and forth without having to get approval from all the other departments in California, the health department, wh- whatever it may be, purchasing that thing to to basically make decisions to put people either in shelters, psychiatric help or addiction treatment centers, and you have to have to expand that significantly. And I think the the argument against that is, is typically you're just going to put these people in jail and you're going to increase the car- incarceration rate. But I think that that what, that can be but he, done he, without that. He doesn't say throw them in jail, right? There's like a couple steps first where, because I don't think like homeless people should just be thrown in jail, right? Like I think if you're on the street, you're addicted to drugs, you're mentally ill. Like there's there's two places you go. One is like, you need to go to rehab because you're addicted to drugs. Right. And the other one is like, you, you need to go to a psychiatric facility because you are mentally ill. Like, like so a 5150, I'm, like we're yeah. going to put you involuntarily in this so psychiatric I, like, yeah, ward. Like I'm not in favor of just rounding all these people up and throwing them in the jail. No, that's I stupid. Don't, I don't I think, think anybody it makes it worse. Is, right? But, but let, let's back up, like I guess, to like first principles, which is sort of like, do people have the right to just sleep in the streets of a city? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I like where you're going. Um, that's such a good question. Uh, and I was just working through that the entire time Nick was talking. And I think that maybe there is a case where there are certain permitted zones where those that are functional, healthy of mind and are causing no disturbance to others, the libertarian in me would like to allow those people to remain outside if they want to okay what comes to mind is like the beach bum so this is where you get the nimbyism not in my backyard so so the the mayor of san diego implemented a a very similar situation like this he's like listen we have a homelessness problem we can't we don't have anywhere to put them so instead we're going to dedicate zones and we're going to call these places like safe zones meaning like we're going to put fences we're going to have security guards it's going to be well lit there's going to be uh, outhouses, like bathrooms. There's going to be a place to clean their hands, for them to wash, like to make it a safe, clean place. The very cool. basic necessities, not necessarily providing, maybe providing some food, but not a lot of services, but just the basics. And they can camp there. That's probably one of the only ways to do it. Okay, so you can't allow they people did to that. take over like a whole beach area. And then guess what happened? Know? What happened? Every neighborhood that was adjacent to that area yeah, basically like, threw a of course, fit, of course, and just said, I, "Good idea, but not, not near in my, my home. neighborhood, right? Yeah, of in course, my backyard, no, right. of course." So, it it mostly doesn't. Work. I like that idea. Uh, I like it too. It would have to be in an area that it doesn't affect people, but it's always going to affect somebody, and that buddy is the person that's closest but we're, to that. We're, we're still area. going too far into the policy end of things. I okay. think, right? Like, I think the first question is, do humans just have an inherent right to sleep in in the streets i guess it's like that's like the kind of step one yeah i i think it all comes down to um the land that we're referring to obviously who, not on who private owns the property land? and there's very little left <laughs> there's very very little left outside of uh, uh uh land that is owned by the city 
and land mm-hmm. that is owned privately by individuals. Like, like what's what's left like I, I, underneath I, I, the bridge? I guess the question and, is sort of like, okay, so let, let's let's narrow down the cities, right? And I I I think everybody here, and correct me if I'm wrong, thinks that a society or a city or a town should decide that issue for themselves, right? And I think we think it's different. Like, are you allowed to sleep in the middle of like Times Square versus are you allowed to sleep in the forest yeah. like, kind of on your own? I think I that's think important because things. then if you support that idea, you can live in that city. And if you don't, you can leave. So I guess the question is, should cities, given that they have the power to decide what happens with that, should they allow people to sleep on the on the streets like should should they allow that i guess should you put it up for a vote is what you're asking because i think yeah. if you put it up for a vote which was which was way back can decide. Wh- I, yeah. I, I guess i'm saying like if you are god if you are the dictator if you're the dictator of san diego like do you allow people to sleep in the streets and if if so why if not why well, i think it has to be up to the people of the city no, I don't. I don't. I don't want to do this as a democracy right, thing. Fine. I want to think like, what fine. do you think is optimal? If you were God, if you were the dictator of the city, what would you do? And why? I, I, I think, why do you think it's good. It's not optimal for the people who live in the city, you know, economically, health wise, safety wise. It's not. It doesn't make yeah. sense. But it also doesn't make sense for the person who is in a part of their life where they have mental illness, a drug addiction, for them to stay on the street. Like that, right. that is where the problem gets so, worse so you don't for think them. think it's good for anybody. Well, I don't well, think it's good for anyone. Yeah. That let's let's it. chalk that up to like, okay, that's a small percentage of the homeless population that would even qualify and just move beyond that. So then you go to the next level of the question, which is, okay, um, you have all these people that, uh, you know, like, like in the original point, like say you did have like a area of San Diego that was like everyone was okay with it. You decided as the the Lord of San Diego that that was okay. And we all agreed that like, okay, of the percentage of homeless people, there's 5% originally that even qualify for such a thing and they want to stay there. Well, what about the rest? Like what happens in general? Should they be, back to Nick's question, I would say if we move beyond that 5% that would qualify for your question, yeah, I think it should be illegal. And the reason that I think it should be illegal, and this is now in defense of having a government at all in the first place, it's funny because everything that we've been talking about highlights the fact that there's no free market solution to most of this. Like there isn't an incentive in place at all to take care of homeless people. And that's why when you have radical free market ideas, you know, Milton Friedman, uh, you're not going to take care of certain people. They're just going to die. Like they're just going to be left to wither in the storms. So... I think this is a humanitarian question. I think this is a question of compassion. I think this is a question of like, we as a society, you know, one of the original things I said, I think we just don't want to spend the time caring about the bottom 5% or 1% of society. 0.2%. 0.2%. Let's just call it 1%. No, it's called 0%. It's closer to zero than one. What is it in San Diego? 0.7. Okay, let's call it 1%. Here, but yeah. nationwide, it's zero point two. I feel like it's less. I feel like zero point seven is point seven percent, right? Zero point seven. Yeah. I think that's the LA number. That's the LA that's number. Bad. So I think California here we're is less. Point two. Nationwide, we're I think 0. It, I think it is it's a lot of people. It's a, it's few people, yeah. really. Like, it's, it's, well, it's few people, but they be, they become so visible. Like they're, they're, they're like they're, they're like, human beings. They're, is what I'm they're, trying to they're, say. They're billboards. I, under, that, like, I understand. Tons of people walk yeah. by and they like see them. I just want to be oh very accurate. Like, I understand. Okay. Yes. On a pure uh, numbers, absolute numbers perspective, they are less than one percent in a major city like LA. But and 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 at a total macro level, they're way less than one percent. But there's a lot of them. There's 600, 700,000. There's almost a million of them yeah, in the country. About half a million. Yeah. Okay. So these are human beings that are going to die as a result of negligence. We have to help the brothers and the sisters of the world. Okay, here's something That's that, what here's I'm something that nobody's at. talked about, and this is important, because uh, the majority of homeless uh, population are male. And yes. 40% of the male homeless population are former military. Yes. And we haven't mentioned that yet. And... Um, I think some of the onus of the responsibility should be put on the military. We spend so much money on military today. Like it's like it's 25 percent of the federal budget. Like it seems to me, I, I don't know the the granular details, but it seems to me that a, a very small amount, if any, is going to help 
that population once they leave the military and then become homeless. Yeah, dude, thank you for bringing that up because that is like an incredible- 40% of the homeless males are veterans. That's yes. huge, yes. huge. Do we know why that is? Like, is I, I know there's like a GI bill that can, you know, veterans or people currently in the military can use for education. I know there's the VA, but I also know that, or at least anecdotally I've heard of stories that like um, a lot of times for PTSD, they, they prescribe drugs, mm. often addictive drugs. So is, is that the reason that like, how, how does, why is that? Like, is, I, do we, I would also say that like, I looked into this a little bit. I don't know what the exact number is. It's high. Okay. It's a lot of veterans who are homeless. Yes. I also know that it was like exponentially higher, like I 15 it years ago. Four. It's 40%. So it's, Jesus Christ. it's, it's, I don't think it's 40%, 40 of males. Look, look, mm -hmm. look this up. Cause like, I, I, I don't have high conviction. 8% of the women. It's way too high versus what it should be. But I actually think that as a society, we've improved the number of homeless veterans but also like we've failed even more on homelessness as a whole. And I, I think it's sad that anybody who fought in a war or was in the military is homeless. Like, so I feel like we should be arguing with the nuance of that. It's, it's, it's terrible. It's disgraceful. It's stupid. Kind of. But it's it, it, it just, disgraceful. it kind of leads into another topic, which is just like, okay, like the person mm, put their life on the line only to be left out on the street right. because they weren't mentally capable of taking care of themselves. And their so, mental was, compromised by the fucking by job the thing yeah. that they sacrificed yeah. that we, to do. Yeah, had them do. Yes. But if we and it, we paid for it up front, but then we don't want to take care of the back it. end. Yeah, exactly. Like, but how crazy it is it that there's probably like 100% agreement on this issue in the country. Like I, I feel like everybody who you poll, like 99 of 100 people would be like, "Hey, this person like fought in this war and they saw their buddies like head get blown off and they have PTSD and they've been on drugs and they like, can't cope and they're homeless." Like should we do stuff for them? I feel like literally everybody would be like, yes, give them all the support in the world. Like everybody believes that. And yet in spite of that consensus, we still have. But is this, is this a, is this a dollar problem? Because my, or is my it an education. So problem? my interpretation is that like with mental health, it's so complex and we haven't figured it out yet to the point where it's like, there is no solution for a lot of this stuff today. So like when, when people are having these mental issues, it's like, yeah, we want to help and like nothing that we have right now Wait is for helping. the psychedelic revolution but, coming, but, baby. But in, this in, may seem naive, but like why can't we just build veterans who have PTSD like apartments? Like, all right, so we just give them an apartment. We're, we're, yeah. I, I just want to say we're less than five years away from psychedelics becoming the go-to prescription for PTSD. Okay, so let me touch on what Eric just said and then I'll, I'll talk to your point. But like, uh, I think it's estimated that California spends $11 billion on, on mental health a year. That's the annual budget, roughly. Um, that makes us the, the number one Sounds state hot. per capita and it is not addressing the homelessness issue. So like, uh, what I'm suggesting is like refocusing that budget in, in, this, in this form. Stephen, what was your point? I mean, this is maybe a naive question, but I'm just like, okay, oh, like, yes. why build, should we just build them we homes? Just build them housing. Okay, so ten like, every years stat ago, you look at is like this person costs forty <clears throat> to seventy five thousand a year. To, a year. Okay, you know? so ten years ago, roughly, I used to believe this problem was very simple. So you look at a, a percentage of the homelessness, and then you calculate there's there's a certain portion, let's say ten percent, that consume a majority of the county services. So I'm talking about um, a certain amount of the homeless consume a lot of the police force. They consume a lot of the hospital sources and the taxpayer has to pay those bills when they're put into the hospital. And there's a certain portion that recurringly shows up at hospitals and, and consumed resources. So you're, you know, the average is call it 70 grand, but you're talking about 10% consuming hundreds of thousands of dollars a year of count taxpayer services. And I thought, well, it's simple. Like we could just give the homeless a home for a lot cheaper. And um, that was about 10 years ago. There's a there's an organization called, I think it's like Housing First or First Housing, and essentially they do that. They they provided um, homes. Wait, for, for veterans or for not, all not, homeless? So not okay. veterans. It was, they focused on the, the homeless people that consumed the majority. They were basically looking for an ROI. Like, okay, this person consumes two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year of, of resources. So it was a, a I, free market. Scenario. I think this is actually like a, a slightly different problem, but I'll let you. Right, but I, I guess to, to my where, where I'm where I'm leading is that 
so they did this and then they also measured this in a control group and, and they found that like behavior didn't necessarily change like specifically drug addiction behavior didn't change and it was very confounding that they were like why does this data when we give a homeless person a home why doesn't their behavior change it's because they didn't necessarily provide the additional psychiatric and uh, drug addiction treatment again sponsored by the state from state leadership levels to help them along with that they gave them like essentially an account manager to keep track of them but that privacy and you know they hypothesized why didn't this work and they said well maybe the privacy allowed them to you know again do do more drugs some some and some of them didn't even stay in in the homes over like 6 12 month period mm. i think it was like a 12% stay rate so you know I like that solution. It seems so obvious, such an easy, clean solution. It made an ROI for taxpayers. It gave homeless people homes. But in the end, um, when they didn't require that they were drug free, it didn't require them to go through psychiatric care or addiction care over a 10 year period. It, it, I think it's been proven that it's not necessarily um, better. So I think um, it's an expensive problem. And that's something that people aren't comfortable with. It's a very expensive problem. It begins with housing. But most of it is going to be lifelong psychiatric or rehabilitation care. But it's we're uh, paying it either way, whether Correct. we set Correct. it up or we don't. And, and but, what I'm saying but is, but we're not addressing it the right way. But the county, but there's no solution. That's my issue: is that there's no way to solve mental health. Like, what do you mean? Like, if somebody is like schizophrenic and whatever. Sure like, is. you don't just like solve that. Sure no, I mean, there's, there, there's actually medication mean? to like. There's medication. Okay, there's wait. Therapy, I, I have a really, I have a related question. So. Back in the 80s, we, we got rid of, like, largely got rid of the ability for the government to forcibly commit you and force you to just be, right. like, kind of, I don't and want when to say did the rise in homelessness start? Yeah, so, so th this is sort of like a kind of deeper, I guess, libertarian discussion. Like, do, do you think the government should have the ability to forcibly restrain you and commit you to an institution to get your mental health fix and you you can't leave until you are healthy. So this is this is question. the scariest part of what I'm proposing that like I'm like this could this could expand yeah. and grow into something that is like really gross and grotesque yeah. and inhumane. Because I, yes. I, I, right? I believe like, like I, I believe absolutely yes. Like I absolutely think that the government like so I, lefties confuse me to a degree even though apparently i am one of them but like lefties confuse me because on the one hand they they believe in this concept of externalities right as a corporation like you can't pollute that river because your actions impact everybody else around you right but when they see like a schizophrenic person like wandering the street like when i see like a homeless guy like wandering the streets of san diego who's clearly schizophrenic who's clearly like not okay like I sometimes walk around and I'm like, how are people not like taking this more seriously? This guy at any moment could just pick up a knife and just like stab somebody. I've seen like, homeless people man, walking around with knives. And and I know on my walk to work. I know people who have been attacked, like multiple, multiple, multiple people who have been assaulted by homeless people, right? These people are externalities. But for some reason, like the concept of an externality, the idea that like, oh, like, no, we can't allow corporations to have externalities and affect you. But we're, we need to let these people be free and just like walk around the city and be this danger to everybody else around them. Like if you're in a crowded urban metropolitan area, like you, you in my mind, you don't have the right to just wander the streets mentally ill. Like I, I don't have any problem with society like taking you in and like committing you. But and I will I will end with this, like we also can't like kill all of our mental health programs and just throw these people in the jail like that's also a, a crappy solution the the fine line that we walk with what you're discussing is that schizophrenia on the one hand um, these people deserve help their desire for help that's mm. the question true and the line that we have to be careful when we think about individuals rights is that are they serving a danger are, are they are they a danger at all to other people if you have a schizophrenic person who has zero history of causing harm to others who wants to live in the street who wants to be in the zone that it's allowed that they're allowed to stay in do we have a right 
Yes. Government? Well, that's yes. the question. That's in, the question. That's the question. In my that's opinion, the question. I mean, that's yes. your answer, and I'm and I'm saying that's a dangerous one. But and the reason it, it's dangerous it, is because yeah, it's a slippery slope like everything we discuss all the right. time. This is a person who serves no danger to others. They are schizophrenic. They want to be outside and they want to say crazy things and do crazy things, but they serve no harm to others. Right. And, and the moment that they do harm, then they'll be sure. uh, incarcerated like any like other criminal. Any other but individual. if they're just screaming at the top of their lungs and, on the street, that's not a crime. And, and the reason I want to say that this is sensitive and a very fine line is because, I mean, schizophrenia is a form of reality. Like we agree on one consensus reality where the majority of human beings were not schizophrenic. We see the world the same way. We've woven it together. We agree on what is true. And that's the difference. These people do not agree that the same things are true. And and just to give an anecdote that like broke my heart literally fucking today. I'm at my normal coffee shop in the morning and the majority of uh, homeless people are male. This happened to be a female. She was about 45, so pretty young. She had a dog. She had a little like chihuahua in her purse and actually at first i was not sure like i just thought she was just like a non-homeless lady like she was just like doing her thing and she pulled up and she sat directly next to me outside at the coffee shop and she had her chihuahua in the bag and she let the dog out but as she walked up she was kind of sad and like on the brink of tears and then she sat down and she just started crying and i was just like oh fuck man like What's the right thing to do here? Like, do I want to it disrupt like what she's going through? And, and then I started to realize like she's actually going through a lot and she's mentally ill. I started to pick up on the fact that she was mentally ill. Like it just was not normal. And then I got up and I didn't feel right just walking away. I like I couldn't just help it. And I honestly was just like, hey, are you OK? The answer I got it, it was not an answer that I could have a conversation with, unfortunately. Like she just, she wasn't there. And I wanted to help, I wanted to be there. I wanted to, honestly, I, it was like, it's so heartbreaking that I was just like, if you wanna cry, just cry. Be, I'll be a shoulder to cry on and that's it. But like, she was not even in a place where that was of value to her. And in fact, it was kind of disturbing her reality she was kind of just like, go away, like, fuck off. Don't like, even acknowledge don't me. Don't acknowledge me because I'm in my own universe. Yeah. That's really sad to me. But that's something I want to get to the root of. And that's not something that is worthy of like putting this person uh, involuntarily in a place that they don't want to be. If this lady wants to walk around, not cause a harm to me and cry with her chihuahua, I kind of feel inclined to say like she should be allowed to. I don't know. Well, I mean, we're, we're talking about you know, the safety of people who live in the community, who are functioning in the society, in the community. But I'm also saying that the safety of other homeless people, what I've noticed anecdotally living downtown and in, in urban areas is that there are a lot of homeless people who actually sleep in in very like high traffic, well-lit areas. And I, I originally thought I was like, well, if I was homeless, I would find like a secluded safe right. place. But the reality is that they are safer in high traffic areas. They're not gonna get raped, they're not gonna get assaulted, they're not gonna get robbed. And so when you're talking, we're talking about the safety of people who live and function in the community, but I'm also talking about it's it's not safe for mm. other homeless people to, to be in that in that scenario. Yeah, thank you for that. That was so, uh, uh, I, feel, I, feel, I feel ashamed actually. Like the whole focus has been on like, how does this affect us as non-homeless people? But like that was, that and was I think really where it, where it important. butts up against some like potentially libertarian views is that like what we're saying is that a judge is going to be the one to decide is this person involuntary involuntarily committed to a psychiatric ward or a drug addiction center. Um, but on on the positive side, you could say, well, this person has made it through some drug addiction centers, and now we're going to offer them a state job. You know, Schellenberger says that like, you know, part of the um, uh, forest fire issue we have is that we need to do maintenance in like certain uh, national forests. It's 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 hard labor. It's a, and we need a lot of bodies to do it. There are jobs that you could give people as they potentially graduate out of these programs. Again, if they are drug free and if they graduate these programs, like you could lead them into a path of like 
a state sponsored job. Not in, to get overly nuanced, but the drug free thing kind of grinds my gears a little bit. What Because I want to be specific about what drugs we're talking about. I mean, we're talking about crack, <laughs> fentanyl. Like we're not talking about cool. weed. Uh, we're okay. not. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Because I, I, I think yeah. the the cultural yeah. mindset is changing around certain drugs, and um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we should differentiate between drugs that cause externalities, right? So, a sure. hypothetical drug where you take it and you go on a psychotic rampage and yeah. you lose control of yourself that, is not illegal. The same. For the person to take. Yeah, that's not the same as you smoking one joint and you just feel internally. Well, those drugs are just illegal. Be, have to be treated yeah, for starters. Yeah, so. just to be clear, I, 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 I'm just against like all the drugs themselves being illegal. I just think like, um, does it disqualify them from receiving the service? Yes. I mean, I, I but like, I, I don't think this person that. should yeah. go to jail because they want to do PCP. Do you know what I'm saying? No, I, I think people should only go to jail if they if society has offered them like every single out to like either integrate or just go somewhere else, right? And they've refused like a million times. No, right? that's like, not a reason to go to jail. The reason to go to jail is because you committed a crime. No, like I, I do well, think I do think PCP. that at a certain point that's you not, have to that's, criminalize that's, things, no. right? And you have to offer people but like a I path, go to jail, right? For PCP. If you if so there isn't an fuck? end, I'll bail you out. If there isn't an end result of you go to jail, even if it's a long like like there is ultimately no incentive for you to be a good citizen, right? This is this is sort of like the. The, you know, this is like the, the Singapore mindset, right? Like a slightly less extreme where they're there. They're basically like, oh, you put gum on the sidewalk. Uh, you're Straight jail, to jail. Lashes. Straight to like, jail. Like, I'm not saying we need to do that. But like also that is objectively. Effective. Why do we care if people want to do drugs that are going to kill them or cause because them these drugs cause externalities. externalities? They cause them to behave in a way that harm other people. And also like not. So to be, then punish the externality, not, not the yeah, drug. And, like, look, also, use. like this is going to sound. Punish this is going to sound like a little anti-human, right? But like, and I don't mean to come across this way, right? But if you as a society enable this behavior where all your streets become littered with people and tents and everything, you're like, this is an eyesore. Some people might be like, why are you being cruel? But at a certain point, if that sort of pervades throughout society, business leaves, people leaves, that the, the tax money drives up, tax money that could be used to help these people and then you go over an edge where you just go to this point of no return and the entire thing just can't be saved anymore right like there is a there is a balance where society has to help people who can't help themselves but also it has to preserve the boundaries of society that allow that society to have the means to help those people in the first place otherwise it's just it just it's just fine all goes i think hell, that's right? up for debate how that works out in the end like economically but like Punish the externality. Don't punish the behavior that is inflicted upon yeah, the self. And it doesn't have to be care it doesn't have to be stick. It can be carrot. And I, I I'm kind of like on Steven's point where um, I noticed myself, uh, what was it, Winston Churchill or something who said, like, if you're not uh, a liberal when you're young, then you have no heart. If you're not a conservative when you're old, you have no head. And it's like I find myself getting more liberal fiscally uh, in in my later years, right? It's like, really? Where I'm seeing like these issues that are partially economic issues like uh you know a swath of of the united states populace is getting left behind entirely yes. when we have so much prosperity and it's like well, that well you're hedging against the end of the world i like that well i yeah and it's partially <laughs> like it's self-serving in, in a way because like i don't want to live in like this apocalyptic yeah. like dystopian that, world yeah because right. like we do have to live in a place where we can all get along otherwise we lose it so i i could line your view up in a, in a fiscal conservative way so in, in California, the high, a lot of us pay the, the highest marginal tax rate, which is 13.3%. And I think what most people would argue is like, okay, you're going to charge me that, but use the money to good use. Like be fiscally responsible with the money. Impact the society, the, my community, my, my, my family's life. Use that money in a good way. And so I think this proposal is essentially don't do it on a statewide level. Pick a city, Santa Barbara, San Diego, you know, maybe not L.A. right off the bat, but uh, let's do a test case. And I'm talking about impact within months, not years. I mean, imagine a three month period. And this requires a lot of money. You have to increase police force. You have to increase the judicial system. You have to talk about psychiatric care, like drug addiction care. This is a this is a big money uh, problem. But you're talking about within months, say three to four months, literally moving people 
into shelters, into psychiatric care, into uh, drug addiction centers, again, state run, not county or charity run. And like you might feel better about your taxes if, and again, I would argue that's like a fiscal conservative way of like using the money productively. Um, and so, you know, use the entrepreneur way of testing this case out, like take a small city or, or like a, a test case and give it two years to see, does this, does this thing work? How, what are the outcomes that people try? Cause we haven't tried this before. And what we're doing so, isn't working. I guess like you would increase the tax rate to fund that. I'm not saying increase the tax. I mean, reallocate if, the budget. If you I mean, reallocate the budget. I mean, we yeah. have a massive surplus. Oh yeah, yeah. we do have a surplus. Uh, but our roads, our infrastructure need fixing. Like we probably got the worst roads I've ever seen in any I, state. I, I can take bumpy roads, but like I would rather have the money go over. I'd take the bumpy roads for the next 20 years if they said we're going to provide ho- homeless people with either shelter or a service that that you know, hopefully yeah. it puts them on a better path. I mean, I, I agree with you. Like, I don't, I don't mind paying taxes. I don't mind paying taxes. The problem is like, you, you can't live in California and not be like, this is a fucking joke. Right. I pay all this money and like my car hits a pothole. There's a guy taking a shit in the street over there. Like I live in apparently a wealthy area, but I have to send my kids to a different school district. Like, 700 feet away. And this one is, I don't know. Like, it's just, it's just so ridiculous right like so you can't like go through that and yeah. be like this is this is wrong right and it, it it's weird for people to have this like it, it, it's a funny thing that i see a lot of like california liberals kind of turning the corner and they're like i am a liberal and i am progressive and i i care about people but also i've realized that like government is shit and like i can't just be liberal and just give my tax money to these people and have them spend money and the problem goes away. And it's like, it's almost like there has to be something else there, you know? Yeah. And and so I'm not saying take the money and give it to charities who are unaccountable. I'm not saying give it to for-profit companies, not saying to give it to counties. Like, you know, you need state leadership. You need a governor who's really ready to take this on, do it as a case study. And then, you know, the citizens can hold them accountable or, or just like be genuinely curious about, does this actually work? Um, I want, I want to wrap up with one fact for you guys, even though I feel like it, you're going to want it to prompt like an entire oh, different discussion. Oh, you're going to end with a fact? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm going to want to talk so about. So I, I looked at a number of studies and like people talk about like why does homeless, what are the correlations between homelessness? What's like, the probability that we're Is it, is it the weather? Is it the, <laughs> you zero, <laughs> zero okay, point zero, 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 right? Thank you. Um, I, I, I saw a couple of studies and they, they drew like a 30 to 40% correlation with homelessness with this one kind of factor. And it was the only thing that had like a really strong correlation. Do you, do, what, do, what do you think it is? It's a government policy. What, what? that was incomplete for me. There's uh, a, is it federal or state? It's a, it's a local government policy that has a strong correlation with real inc- large increases in homelessness. Mm. Ooh, I don't know. Give it to us. Rent control. Mm. Because oh, of yeah. affordable housing. Well, because it pushes out. The, uh, the the general idea, like if you subscribe to this belief, and, and I do, full disclosure, is that like like politicians want to solve problems. They don't like complicated, long-duration solutions to problems. So what do they often opt for? Price controls. Rent control is a price control. What rent control does perversely is it suppresses the supply of housing. Yes. I do think the supply of housing is a factor in homelessness. I think if it costs $100 a month to have a home here in California, I don't think we'd have any homeless people. So I know, I but think the, like their is thought ridiculous. is like, oh, well, uh, suppress price and that will get price down to $100 a month. Yeah, we'll just ban housing from being expensive right. and then people will be able to But you're right, housing. because what ends up happening is a lot of supply gets swallowed up by uh you know, normal citizens who have lived there for a long time. This was like literally our lives in San Francisco. We would like, we would like uh, stay on a lease to give the apartment to our friend. Yeah. Uh, and then like, right. so you, you suppress <laughs> yeah. the supply and then like the normal market price then of available housing goes way high to like sort of compensate for market prices. Uh, and that just wipes out sort of the middle class and just makes uh, affordable housing unavailable. For the record, I was homeless once. I slept on your sofa. <laughs> That's beautiful. I mean, for a whole month. I feel like this could be a great discussion. Got you, bud. Any a whole time. different Thanks, time. I think, I think it's an interesting. I've done it. Topic. I'm going to be okay. I've done it. It's going to be fine. But we, we we don't have to delve in it right now. Like it kind of ties into the idea that I, I do think a lot of the reason for homelessness is shit government policy, and I think a lot of it is under the guise of helping people 
it does the opposite. I think there's a lot of this kind of yeah. NIMBYism, rent control, this sort of like, I want to get mine and protect it. That's what rent control is. That's what NIMBYism, NIMBYism is. It sort of just passes the buck elsewhere. It's like a value, you know, shift from people over here to, to, to these people who happen Look, to be the blessed ones. I think a lot of what you're saying is like a major part of the problem is the people in charge of solving the problem are kind of inept a lot of the time they don't approach the problem like an entrepreneur would well, i think an entrepreneur they, I think approaches the problem with with well an entrepreneur is illogical in many ways so the example that nick made and we can we can end soon i don't want to take this further but like the idea of a case study city as an experiment to figure out the optimal solution is what an entrepreneur would do Except they would do that 10 times at the same time. If you were the governor of California, you'd go, I'm going to pick 10 cities. I'm going to run 10 radically different experiments to identify the optimal solution. You're looking for an MVP that results in the greatest final end product. Like that's the way anyone with a brain would approach this. And unfortunately, we just don't have people like that in charge. So the best thing that we can do, which is why I even dare to care about politics in the first place at all when I didn't at all before is to care about politics enough to vote people in place that represent these kinds of ideas. Like that's the only thing we can do. Mm -hmm. What else is there? I agree. I think there's a general benefit to people becoming more, a lot of people are like, well, what does it matter? I can't do anything. But the more people become like awake and they see the bullshit going on, yes. the more these people can't do this fucking absolute egregious nonsense. Yes. We vote them out. But you first have to understand the issue. Then you have to understand what possible solutions might look like. Then you understand that certain representatives might make those solutions a possibility. And you vote for those yes, people. But the point is you are making an impact just by getting a little bit of you knowledge are. and tweaking your behavior a little you bit. You are. Thanks, guys. Thank you. What are we talking about in the next episode? We're talking about teaser. We're talking about learning. We're talking about learning. Meta learning. How to learn. Meta how to learning. Le how to learning. How to learn. Learning. Meta how to learn. learning. Life's, life's greatest skill. Okay. Opinion. All right, that's a wrap. We'll see you guys there. See One you next love. time. Peace. Bye.